Hello and welcome to Planning Center University. My name is Caleb and I am a customer experience manager here at Planning Center. Today I'm going to be talking to you about our giving product. So if you're not familiar already, giving is Planning Center's donation management platform. It's available in the United States and in Canada. Um, Planning Center, or, sorry, giving is designed to handle all of the tax deductible donations for your church. So this isn't an, an all-inclusive income tracking platform, but instead for those tax deductible donations, this is the choice for you. So giving overall is a comprehensive donation platform that allows you to accept donations, process donations, track trends, get reports, do statements, all of that good stuff. We're going to be going over a few of the main level, high level uh, features of the product. That's going to be including things like preparing, giving to accept donations. We'll be covering processing and tracking donations, including what the donation form looks like on our church center product. Um, we'll be going over statements and reporting, and then we'll also go over a few of the common questions that we get about planning center giving wrapping up at the end. So before I get into all that, though, I did want to show you how to submit feature requests, get help from our support team at any point in time, whether during this session or any time that you're using our products. So I'm going to show you by switching over to giving here. So you'll see in the top right corner, there's this question mark, and you can, um, you can click that at any point. And that's available on any page, any product. Um, based on the page that you're looking for or that you're looking at at the time, um, you're going to see suggested articles listed right here in the top section. Since we're on our dashboard page, as we call it for this first page of giving, you see the dashboard tour, things like that, depending on what, pro what page you are on. Um, the next thing is if you don't see any of the suggested articles or any of the things that you're looking for in that top section, you can always search for whatever topic you're interested in in this next box. So I'm going to look for statements for an example, and you'll see all the help articles that have to do with both U.S. donor and um, Canadian donor statements are listed there. If you're still not able to find what you're looking for, you can always open a ticket with our support team as well. So you'll notice here that we currently have 24 minutes as our response time, which is awesome. Shout out to the support team. Um, we typically look at a, a response time at under an hour during normal business hours. So that's what you can expect when you're opening a ticket with our support team. So again, you can click this button to open a ticket at any point in time, and you'll be in contact with that awesome team. So yeah, um, before we jump in, one last thing I wanted to mention as well is that we are recording this live right now on um, during Planet Center University. If you want to come back and look at it later, you can do that here on YouTube or you can go to planningcenter.com slash university at any point in time. You can watch this session as well, as well as any session that we've done about our other products as well there on that page. All right, that's all the housekeeping. We're gonna move on to the setting up process of giving. So you're a new subscriber, you're just getting started. When you move over to the giving product, this is the first thing you're gonna see. It's gonna be the setup process that'll walk you through all the steps that we need uh, all the information that we need from you to get started within giving. On this first page, it'll give you an overview of what that information is. And then um, though I'm not gonna walk you through the whole process right now, I'll give you an idea of what to expect. You'll be setting up like your currency, connecting a Stripe account, setting some of your organization information like your contact information, and then you'll be choosing a default fund. So one thing I mentioned in there is connecting and confirming your Stripe account. So with Stripe, Stripe is the um, donation um, processing platform that we connect to with giving. So that means that you're able to process online donations, whether that be through um, Church Center app, Church Center web, text to give any of the online platforms, all that is handled by Stripe. You also have the option to process offline or external donations like cash or check or physical donations through a, uh, a tool we call Batches. So we're gonna go all over all of that later on in our session. All right, so um, another option that you're gonna have during this setup process is setting your Church Center URL. So Church Center overall is a free platform that we offer to all of our users that allows you to facilitate all of the congregation or user-facing side of Planning Center. So in this case with giving, your donation form as well as donor profiles will all be handled on the church center side of giving. Okay, great. So once you have this whole setup process finished, the next thing we suggest you do is um, move over to the people tab here and you'll be able to set up users with different permission levels within giving. So 
by default, when you finish the setup process, you're gonna be set as the default admin. You'll be able to head over to, again, the people page and then the users tab here. And on this page, you'll be able to add a user. So in this case, I'm gonna use me as an example. So my name is Caleb, let's select me. Try that one more time. And then here I'll have an option to set a user role for that profile. The highest arching role that you have here in giving is the giving administrator. This is gonna be able to control all the settings, access all of the donation information, donor information, all of that within giving. So the giving administrator shouldn't be necessarily everybody on your team, but it's those people that are in charge of adjusting the settings for your account and um, having full access to all of the giving information in your account. The next one down is bookkeeper. So if you have someone that needs almost full access, they need a lot of information about donors, but you don't necessarily need them adjusting the settings or adding users to your, um, your giving account, that would be what a bookkeeper would be able to do. And we'd wanna set that as that user um, level or the permission level. The next one down here is reviewer. So reviewer is commonly those, let's say like a pastor on staff that wants to know overall the trends of giving, but they don't want to know all of the details about the donors who have given. This is a limited access role that'll give them access to the dashboard, um, as well as like pledge campaign, campaign progress and those types of reports. So that way they can see trends and kind of the health of, of donations that are coming into the church. They won't have any ability to um, access donor profiles or make any changes of any kind to the account. And then the last one here is the counter. So counters are oftentimes those, whether it be a team member or a volunteer that are handling cash and check donations that come in on a Sunday morning or at one of your services. And in this role, you're able to access the batches tool that'll allow you to, to um, enter that information, but they aren't able to actually commit it or view full donor profiles. They'll just be able to see some of the contact information, who's giving, so they have just enough uh, information that they need to actually enter those donations into giving. All right, great. So that's overall what it looks like for permissions within giving. We talked a little bit about Stripe already, but one thing, is, one thing I wanted to also mention as just a suggestion for you using giving and Stripe is that these two accounts are connected, but they are also separate. So you'll wanna make sure that you have permissions set up both in giving, but also users set up within Stripe so that if there is ever a time that you need to access your Stripe account, or make any changes to the settings, you have at least one or two people that have access to that and make can make those changes where needed. All right, great. So now we've got the product set up, we have users set up so the people that need access have access. Now we wanna make sure that we have everything set up for donors to be able to give. So we, I would suggest moving then to the manage tab and then we're gonna talk about funds. So funds are essentially the buckets that um, donors will be able to choose from when giving online or counters can choose from when adding physical or uh, external donations into batches. It's essentially trying to track the intent that the donor has of where their donation is going to be used. So by default, you have a general fund and you can set up as many funds as you'd like. Um, but again, this is designed to make it so that when you're on the donor form, you'll have some options to choose from, pre-selected options that you as an admin can set up. A big thing that I've talked to, I talked about in our intro, but also I wanted to make clear is just when you're using giving and funds, we want to make sure that these are used for tax deductible purposes only. This isn't designed to handle like things like tax or sorry, ticket sales or reimbursements, things like that. As long as something's tax deductible and it would, you would wanna see it on a year-end statement, that's the type of fund that you'll wanna set up here. So I'll show you some examples of funds that we have. So we have the general fund. An example is like we have a new building that we're, gonna, we're collecting money for, so we have that type of fund, a missions fund, all of that. Um, and within each fund, you have the option to adjust um, a, a few different settings. You have the name, you can set up a ledger code if you have something in your uh, general ledger that you wanna connect that fund with and you can send, set some pretty colors here as well if you wanted to. And you can also set a description that will be shown to the donor when giving on the donation form. One big part I wanted to highlight though is just the visibility of the actual fund. So if, there's, um, if there is a fund that you want to either hide or have visible in public, you can adjust all of that within here. So the first section here, you'll be able to choose whether or not you're accepting donations for that fund. So you can either make it an open fund or a closed fund. 
And then next, um, church center, again, is the, is the congregation-facing side of planning center. And you'll be able to set up um, the options of how visible it is on church center. So if you want it to be listed and available to everyone, you choose that first option. If you want it to be available only for those people that click a link to get to that page, then you can do that as well. And then if you want to hide it so that it's only available to, on the administrative side of giving or when people are entering donations into batches, you can set that to unpublished. So yeah, that's overall some of the main options when it comes to working with your funds, and you'll have that option for each of your funds that you're setting up. One last little tip that you have too is if you wanna make an adjustment to how these are ordered on your donation form, you can always click this, drag it to the place that you want, and it sticks right there. So you can make an, uh, make an adjustment to whatever uh, order of funds that you want. The only exception to that is your default fund, which is this top one, is always gonna be set up as the top fund. So yeah, just a little tip to keep in mind as you're working with funds. So um, when working with giving, now that we have all of this set up, donors are now ready to give. You as an admin are gonna be working with um, a few different types of donations when working with giving. So if you, again, if you have online donations, all of those are gonna be handled by Stripe. So that'll be coming through text to give through Church Center web, Church Center app. And then you also have the batches tool, which you can see at the top page here. And that batches tool will handle all uh, cash, check, external donations. So if you have an integration set up, you'll see those showing up in batches. We're gonna come back to that a little bit later to show you what batches look like and how that whole process works. Before we do that, I know you're really interested in seeing like, okay, we have it all set up. What does this look like for donors? So let's take a look at the church center experience when giving online for donors. So this scenario that I set up is this is the first time that a donor has ever seen your donation form before. They haven't logged in, they haven't given before. So this is what it's gonna look like. And in this case, we're working with our test account, Centerville Church. So again, I come across your donation form and I wanna give a donation of $20. This donation is just gonna go to the general fund. I will have some options of funds here, but since it's, uh, I'm not really sure exactly where I want this money to go, I'm gonna leave it up to you as an admin to decide how the money's gonna be used. So I'll just keep that with the general fund. We're gonna set up a one-time donation. You have the option of one-time or regular. And then um, I'm going to use a kind of fictional character here. We're gonna work with Brandon throughout the day here. So um, so we're gonna work with Brandon at cvchurch.co and then, oopsies, can I type here? Brandon Young, here we go. All right, now we'll go to the next step here. Um, sometimes if you run across this, you may have to answer some questions to just prove that you're not a robot. Um, I'm gonna just, hopefully you trust that I'm not a robot as I'm talking to you now, uh, but I also have to prove this to the donation form every once in a while. So that's all that was there. And you have some options as well to set up different types of payment methods. You can use Apple Pay for those who are using um, Apple devices and have that set up. Um, you can choose to set up a bank account. That is gonna require a login, but um, we'll go over that in just a second. And then you also have the option to add a card. So I'm gonna use that option here. I'm just gonna add this fake card. Don't write this number down because it's not gonna get anything for you. It's totally fake. Um, but then I also have the option, if I have this set up within my settings, to cover the processing fee as well. So I'm gonna do that and I'm just gonna give. So you'll see it's just gonna process and once that's finished, you'll see a confirmation page come up and that's the whole process of donating. And again, just as a reminder, that's someone coming to your donation form for the first time, they've never given before. That whole process that I just showed you is them actually setting up a donor profile for themselves just by simply giving. So um, when a donor profile is set up, one of the beauties of Planning Center and the way that it kind of uh, works together is that now there is a donor profile that's been created both in your giving database and within Planning Center people. So you can now manage that profile on the admin side, but donors also have the option to manage their profile on the Church Center side as well. So let me switch over to an example of now what it looks like for Brandon if he comes back and he gives again. So he's already had a profile set up for him um, just by giving that first time. And now he can log in using simply his email address or phone number and a one-time verification code that's sent to him so that he doesn't have to necessarily always remember a username and password. Just use the email address or phone number that he has on his profile and he can log in simply with that. 
All right, so I'm gonna give again, but this time it's showing him as a returning donor. So we'll give $20 again. This time I'm gonna to give to the new building fund and um, we'll keep this as a one-time donation, but you'll notice because I'm logged in, my contact information is here and the save payment method of that card that I added earlier, I'm able to now access that and simply hit give. Um, it really doesn't believe that I'm, that I'm a real person, so we're gonna try this one more time. Hopefully it believes me in the future. Um, okay, great, so that's it. Now it's gonna be processing. And simple as that, he now has a donation that's been processed with a save payment method all in a few simple clicks. So I wanna now show you at the end of this process, now that I'm logged in, you have an option both to go to the website or to go to my profile. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'll show you a little bit of what that profile looks like. On Church Center, a donor's profile will have a few options of things that they can manage. They can always go as a donor here at, to see donation history. They can filter it to certain timeframes or they can download that at any point in time. And then um, I'm gonna show you also skip down to the payment methods option here. So you'll see I have this save payment method so I can either remove it or I can add one or just manage that here. You also have options to work with recurring donations, which you'll see on this tab. Um, text to give, some notification preferences, and then if you do issue those, which um, you'll also have the option to download and access your donor statements for year-end statements as well. All of that can be handled from your donor profile here on Church Center. Another quick tip that's really helpful is that you can use um, Church Center and each of these tabs to the, uh, to the left here can be shared with direct links. So you would um, have a Church Center link that is specific to your church and then if you were to add slash giving slash recurring donations to the end of it, just pull that from your address bar and share it with your donors. That'll give them direct access to whatever tab they need to manage. So for example, if you have donors that, uh, a lot of donors that have recurring donations set up, you can share that direct URL with them and then it sends them right to the page that they need to be on in order for them to manage their recurring donations. So it's an awesome way to make sure that donors can simply and easily do a lot of the own, uh, their own legwork in, in managing their donations and making sure those are going through as intended. All right, so that is what Church Center Web looks like. Now let's take a look at Church Center on the mobile app. So the mobile app is a, again, it's a free um, platform that's offered to you as a Planning Center user. And if you have giving set up, then it will be available for you here on Church Center Web or on Church Center app. So now that I'm logged into the app, again, I'm, I'm logged in as Brandon here. I'm gonna move over to that center tab, to the give tab, and show you what a, giving a donation looks like um, through this process. So we're gonna do a $10 donation. We'll hit next. So now I'm gonna select which fund I'm gonna to give to. I'm gonna say we'll give to the new building fund. And then this time I'm gonna set up a recurring donation. So I'm gonna say monthly, and then I'll be able to choose when that starts and what day of the month that the frequency um, is, is triggered each time. Next down is your payment method. So the, again, you have the option to use Apple Pay if you have that set up on your device. And for, this, for the sake of this, I'm just gonna use this same saved payment method. You'll still have the option of covering the processing fee if that's set up in your settings, and then we'll hit give. So once that processes, you'll just get this thank you message because we thank you for giving. And then um, that's the whole process. If Brandon ever wanted to go and manage some of the same things we were looking at on Church Center Web within his donor profile, you can do that by tapping the avatar in the top um, right corner, scroll down to the My Giving section, and when you tap on that, it'll give you options to see donation history, manage recurring donations, manage payment methods, and then um, see and download statements. So again, if we look at the recurring donations tab, you can see um, those recurring donations, both one that already existed and one that I just set up. And at any point, if I wanted to, I can go in and edit the details of that. So you've got the amount, the fund, the payment method, the schedule, and I can even pause or fully delete that whole um, recurring donation. So since I already have one set up and I realize that now we have two, I'm gonna just go ahead and delete that one. And then we will um, update it. Yep, and then we'll, uh, so yeah, you can manage all of that here within the Church Center app. All right, great. So. Um, now that we've looked at what it looks like to give online, how do you as an admin manage cash and check donations? You can do that by, we're gonna switch back over to the admin side of giving, and we're looking at our, um, our batches page right here. So 
Um, again, we're looking at cash and check donations that'll be set up um, uh, within your batch page. So first I'm gonna create a new group. In this new group, we're gonna say, um, let's see, today is the 24th. So I believe this last Sunday was the 20th um, or maybe the 21st. So we'll say Sunday, May 21st. So um, I'm gonna set that up first and then we're gonna create new batches underneath that group. So you can set this up really however you'd like to because these uh, batch groups and batches really operate just as folders so they can be organized in, in whatever way makes most sense for your church. Typically, if you're not sure of how to set it up or you don't really have a strong preference, what I would suggest to you is just setting up um, batch groups to handle whatever service or Sunday that you're working with um, for, uh, for those batches, whatever those donations came in or whatever day those donations came in. And then um, you can separate that out to be cash and check donations. So in this case, I'm gonna say cash on this date, and then we'll set up one new batch. That'll be check on, oops, check on 5-21-23. Okay, great. So yeah, and then whenever you're now um, entering donations, what you would do is just choose between cash or check in this case, and then I am going to look up Brandon again, and we're gonna sh uh, we're gonna enter this cash donation that he gave. So in this case, we're gonna see, we're gonna say that Brandon gave via cash using the envelope, so we know his his information. But he gave twenty dollars to the general fund, and then we're gonna say on the twenty first is when it was received. Payment source is Planning Center, and the payment method was cash. So then I'll just hit next. And that donation is now recorded here in that batch. So let me show you another example of if you get a cash donation that came in and was not in an envelope. So maybe you have a group of just cash that was dropped into the bucket or the or the um, receiving plate or whatever you use. And so we're, in this case, I am going to start typing in anonymous. And you'll notice that there is a blue button here that I can click for anonymous donor. So instead of having a donor's name and contact information here, you'll simply see anonymous donors set up. So we got about $200 in cash that just came in um, anonymous, and we'll just say general, and came in on the 21st, and that was all under cash. And then we'll hit next, and then again, that's as simple as it is to enter those cash donations. So one other option that I wanted to highlight for you to show you what, it, what it's like to kind of speed up this process a little bit. You may have a lot of cash and check to come in, uh, cash and check donations. So you might want to make this as quickly, as quick as possible for you and your counters. So you notice that I had a few different fields that I was filling out each time I entered a donation. If you wanted to pre-select some of those fields, you can click this batch defaults option here. And then I'm going to say that a lot of these are going into the general fund. And we at least know that all of them are coming in on the 21st since we're counting donations for the 21st. And then if I'm working with the check batch, um, I'm also gonna assume that all of these are check um, donations that are coming in as well. So I'm gonna keep that payment method as check. The check date can also be preset to the 21st, and then I'll hit save. Notice now that if I type in Brandon's information, a lot of those fields that I just pre-selected in our batches are gonna be um, already set for me whenever I am entering this next donation. So that way, if I add another donation um, that is coming in and I know it's the general fund, it's the receive date and all of that, a lot of that is already pre-done for me. So really, in this case, all I have to do is enter a check number if I wanted to record that, and then I'm good to go and I can hit next. So it makes the process a lot quicker than having to manually enter that each time that I go through that. So yeah. Um, also, if you, uh, if you ever want some other tips on how to make this process a little bit quicker, especially when working with checks, we also have the option of using a check reader to, sp to speed up the whole um, donor selection process. So what our system is doing is it's taking the MICR number from the check, assigning it to a donor, so that when they give the next time using that same check and MICR number, you can quickly scan it and it will pull up the donor's um, profile without you having to enter all that on your own. We have a super helpful article that you can take a look at. So again, if you ever want to access that, you can click this top right corner of the question mark and search for check readers. And it has all the information about the available check readers as well as how to use them and set those up. All right, great. So after all of these donations are entered, the last step that you're gonna be taking is to actually commit the batch. 
So uh, when you're entering these, you'll notice that we have an in progress tab here and we have a committed tab here at the top of the page. So until these donations are committed, they actually aren't saved to the donor's profile and the donor wouldn't receive a receipt for those donations yet. But once we hit this commit group, this, this commit group or commit batch button, what's happening is it's gonna finalize all those donations and those donations will be included both on their donor profile, on their year end donor statement, and then the donor will also receive a receipt for that. So I'm gonna hit commit and the process is going to update and complete. So we'll give it just one second. And you'll notice now that I switch, it switched me over to the committed tab and I'm seeing all of the committed um, batches and batch groups here on the left column. So you can always go back to that tab and access that in the future. All right, great. So that is batches and that's how you work with um, cash and check donations in giving. So say we're gonna move on to the next scenario where uh, Brandon and his family are uh, consistent givers and they decided they want, uh, make, want to make a pledge to one of the campaigns that your, um, that your church is working through. So I'm gonna show you an example of how to set up and what a pledge campaign is. Um, pretty commonly we hear of pledge campaigns being new building campaigns. So I'm gonna show you an example of how to set that up. So let me back up one step. It's just if you wanna set up a campaign, you click this green button to create a pledge campaign. And then I'm gonna say this is the new building and um, collecting funds for our new building. Seems pretty straightforward, right? Um, so we'll hit the next button and you'll be able to choose then what date range you want that, that um, pledge campaign to be active for. So you'll notice that if I say a start date of January 1st, uh, 2023, until let's say, we're gonna do like till the end of 2024. In this case, it'll pre-select just saying that this is a current campaign. So we'll hit next here. So now that I have the donation period set up, the next thing I'm gonna be selecting is the target fund. So let me choose from our new building campaign or our new building fund here, because that's gonna tie with our new building campaign. Um, just to pause really quick to explain how uh, these campaigns are working, is what's happening is it's gonna predetermine, or I'm sorry, we're gonna be choosing the donation period and the target fund to decide which donations are actually gonna to count towards these pledges. So you don't have to do any extra legwork to make sure that donations are being applied to people's pledges after they make them. What our system is doing is actually it's looking at did the donation fall within the donation period and was it given to the correct fund? As long as those two things line up with your campaign, then it's all handled and pre, uh, it's automatically assigned to the donor's pledge. So you'll be able to see what that looks like in just a second. So the next step is your campaign options. If you'd like to, not all campaigns need these, but if you have a budget or a certain goal that you're aiming at, in this case, we're gonna say like 500,000, did I? Yeah, that's enough zeros, right? Yep, 500,000. And so in this case, it's like that is the end goal that we're aiming at. We wanna collect that amount of money. Um, if we also want to display that to donors, we can do that um, by checking this box and it'll show up as part of their uh, pledge campaign updates on their church center profile. So I'm gonna say create campaign. So yeah, then you'll be able to see, though there's aren't, there isn't a ton of data in here quite yet, you'll be able to see that there are some donations that have already been giving to, given to the uh, new building fund even before I set up the campaign. And you're also able to see, because I said this started in January, some of the progress towards this. So this whole page will allow you to kind of get some uh, either graph reports or some uh, data out of um, how many donations and pledges you've received and how much or what progress you've been making toward, toward that pledge. So I wanna show you really quick what it looks like to add a pledge now that we have the campaign set up. So I'm gonna, I can either do this from the campaign page where I can set up a pledge here or any donor profile, you can also set up a pledge straight from there as well. In this case, I'm gonna search for Brandon who we've been working with so far. And um, once I select him, I'm gonna say he is pledging $2,000. So at that point, we are um, pre-populating this, uh, this email that's a thank you email to Brandon for pledging to this campaign. If you decide you don't want to send this email out, you can always uncheck this box and it'll go away. Or if you wanna edit some of the wording of how this email is, is phrased or worded, then you can always do that as well within this, uh, within this window. So now whenever that's done, I'm gonna hit save. 
And you'll notice now that, uh, first of all, Brandon received an email thanking him for his pledge. And second of all, now he is listed here as a pledged uh, donor for your campaign. So yeah, um, now if I wanted to ever look back on his pledges, or if he ever wanted to see his progress, he can do that on the church center side, and me as an admin can go and see how much money he's given already to the pledge that he has set up here. You can always edit it and also remove it if you need to as well from his donor profile. All right, great. So now that we're on the donor profile page, I want to show you a little bit more of what you can do on this page. So right now we're looking at the profile for Brandon Young, and you'll be able to see on this first tab, um, there's, the, there's a donations page. So this shows you all of the donations historically that Brandon has made in the past. And you'll be able to also filter and get statements and export this list if you need to. Um, the next option over is the pledge page that we already looked at here. Um, the pledges will show you all active pledges and the progress towards those pledges. Um, you can also see a list of all recurring donations and their progress. And then you can see any saved payment methods. You can choose to add a card if you need to, um, and you can manage these as well. And then if you needed to as well, you can also adjust the communication um, preferences for Brandon's profile, which is also something he has access to on the Church Center side as well. So let's make our way back over to the Donations tab. On this tab, I wanted to show you some of the options that you have to work with some of, the don some of these donations, because it's more than just a list of data. It's actually something that you can work with as well. So say, for example, um, uh, Brandon wrote in or gave a donation. And he was like, you know what? I gave this to this specific fund, but I want to give it to a different fund instead. So in this case, let's work with the foreign missions one. He gave it to foreign missions, but he really intended to just give it to the general fund so you can use it however you want. So you have the option to click that donation and then um, from that page, you can edit it. You can choose either to adjust the amount as long as it adds up to the same amount that he in initially gave. And then you can choose instead of the foreign missions fund to move over to the general fund and click save donation. So now if you go back to Brandon's profile, you'll see this, um, not only does it show that it was adjusted, so you see that there is a log of changes here, you'll be able to see as well that that change has been made. So if I take one more peek at that donation and you scroll to the bottom, you can see the adjustment history as well. So because I'm logged in as Matthew, um, in this case, you'll be able to see that me logged in as this person made this change to the donation. That way it's not just changed without anybody knowing what was changed. All right, great. So another option would be, Brandon was like, you know what, I not only did I give to the wrong fund, I actually just didn't mean to give right now anyway. I, I wanted to see if I can get a refund for this donation. Totally fine, we can do that as an admin. So you notice right next to this button to edit the donation, you also have the option to issue a refund. So I'm gonna click that. You'll have some refund reasons, whether it be a duplicate, uh, just a refund in general, or if for some reason it turned into like a fraudulent situation, then you can, um, process the refund like that, and you'll notice that it updates now to showing as refunded, and then that money will be returned to Brandon. All that's handled by Stripe as they process all that online. All right, great. So let's make our way back to Brandon's profile one more time, and I'll show you a few other things that you can do on this profile. So a lot of times uh, when people are giving, especially if there's uh, either people giving in the same household or their, um, if their spouses um, are giving as well, a, a helpful tool to do is to actually link their two profiles together. So what I'm gonna do is click this Join Donors uh, button here. And you'll notice that uh, because Nicole and Brandon are actually set up as a household within Planning Center People, there's already gonna be a select or a uh, suggestion for Nicole to come up as his, um, the person that he's giving jointly with. If you don't have that correct person listed here or if there's no one listed, you can always search for someone to add whoever you want to from your database in here. In this case, Nicole is the right choice, so I'm gonna select her profile. And similarly to how uh, the pledge uh, modal works, you can also op have the option to edit an email that is sent to them. An email is always gonna be sent just to let them know that their donation history is now being shared with another person. Uh, because when you join a profile, not only will they uh, have shared donation history on their profile, but they'll also be receiving a joint statement at the end of the year. So that's one of the huge benefits of being able to join these two profiles. So in this case, I'm going to choose Nicole. I'm happy with what the email says, so I'm gonna hit join and notify donors. 
And you'll notice um, that now Nicole is listed as a joint donor here up in the top corner. If there were any, um, you'll notice like there's a few op or a few donations in um, in their history that Nicole has given from her profile, and then Brandon has given a lot of these donations from his profile. So you'll see all of those merged together on each of their profiles. You'll see a combined donation history. All right. So um, the last thing I want to show you on the profile side of things is just what it looks like for um, admin notifications. Because we have a few options that you can set up as admins if you want to keep in touch with what is happening um, with uh, donations. So I'm going to head over to the user profile tab, which is over here on the right. And you'll notice that there are there's this notifications section here. This is one of the newer features within giving. So what you can do here is you can set notifications up to receive a few different things. So for example, if you have a new recurring donation that was set up, this top option will give you that um, and it, the ability to actually receive an email when one of those is set up. Um, you have the option for a few different things, including um, choosing if you want to have an email for every time a uh, one-time donation online is given of at least a certain amount. So in this case, I want to keep track of any donations that have been given that are at least $500, then I'm going to hit save. So that way, if there is ever a time that a donor gives and their donation is above $500, me as an admin will receive an email just letting you know, or letting me know that um, this person gave and it was this amount. Um, if you want to go check it out and maybe follow up with them, you can always do that. So yeah, it's a super powerful and cool tool that you can use as an admin to keep on top of the health of the donations of your church. All right. So that's what the donor profile looks like. That's what the admin profiles look like. Let's move on to the next step of just now that we have um, received all these donations and we've actually put them into giving, what can we do with these donations now? What type of data can we get from them? First, we're going to look at donor statements. So donor statements are typically used at the end of the year to give the donor, um, whether it be a thank you letter or just a notification to let them know this is the amount that you've given and you can report on your taxes at the end of the year. So the statements tab you'll find by hitting manage and then on the left column, you can hit statements. And um, creating a new statement will be as easy as clicking this green button here. So I'm going to title the statement. In this case, we're going to work with 2023. So let's head down to, um, we're going to start with January 1st and end with December 31st. We'll hit save. Great. And then it um, jumps right into the statement here. So there are a few steps that you're going to walk through as you are preparing your statement to be sent. The first one is this configure um, step. Something I wanted to point out to you is there's actually a, a really cool tool here that you can use to make sure that everybody that is intended to receive a statement actually does receive that and we have the information that we need from them to send them a statement. In this case, you'll notice that everybody that is included in the date range that I had set, anyone that has a donation during that time who will be receiving an emailed statement is ready to do that. Everybody has an email address on their profile. However, if you go down to the next step here, you'll notice that if I did want to send out mailed versions of these or if I needed an address on their, on their statement, seven out of 10 of these people have a mailing address, but the other three of them don't. So you'll actually have the option to view who those people are, and I can either edit their profile here um, by clicking edit and it'll pull up their information. I can add any information that I have for them. Or if I wanted to view their profile to follow up with them, or click this email these donors button where you can email the whole list of people to ask them for their mailing address. So you can do all that from this page. The configure step will also give you some options of how to format the statement. Um, you can include, this is where you'll update your uh, return address and the format of the, of the senders or the recipient's address, I'm sorry. Um, and then you'll also be able to see a preview here. So because I'm feeling good about how all this looks, I'm gonna move on to the next step. So the next step will be emailed statements. So yeah, email statements will um, just be sent out to anyone who has an email address on their profile and has given within the date range that I have set for my statement. So you'll be able to see a list of those donors by clicking on clicking here, download a CSV if you'd like to. Um, you can also see some more information about the email itself and update the statement if you'd like to. And then you can also update the body of the email that works kind of like a cover letter for your statement. 
If, uh, one thing I wanted to point out is that you can always, there's some placeholders here that you can uh, adjust to make it feel a little bit more like you if you wanted to. So right now, you'll notice that this highlighted section says donor's full name. So because we're working with Brandon, it would read, Dear Brandon Young. I want to make that a little bit different to just use his first name so that it feels more, uh, maybe a little bit more casual than it feeling like uh, so, so separate from having his full name there. So I'll be able to hit this email template variables and see a few of the options that I have. So in this case, I want to update this to just being the donor's first name. So I'm going to type that out and then add the comma. And now, instead of it reading Brandon Young, if I go and see the preview, which you can do on the bottom right corner here, you'll notice that uh, Brandon and Nicole, because they're joining, uh, they have their joint donors are actually seeing both of their names listed there, which is great. Another option that you could do if you wanted to update this to be um, uh, formatted in a way that says like Brandon and Nicole Young, I can then add a space and then I'm gonna say donor and then we'll say, um, last name. So that way it's donor first name, donor last name. And if I hit this preview, you'll notice it says Brandon and Nicole Young, which is um, a great format for spe especially when you're using um, joint statements like this or joint donors that are uh, tied together. All right, great. So I'm feeling good about this email. I'm going to send that out to those 10 donors, hit send, send those statements. So now it's going to take me to the next step, which is print statements. So typically what we suggest is that when you send out email and when you're working with both email and print statements that you'll send out the email first, wait a few days, maybe a week or two, and then follow up with those donors that may not have viewed their statements if, they all, if you also want to make sure they get one via mail. If you wanna make sure that you're not sending out duplicate statements, like they've already gotten it over email, so we don't necessarily need to send it over, over mail, we can save some postage, save some paper, simply by adjusting the inclusion options that we have at the top of the print statements. To do this, you can check this box, and you'll have the option to include donors who emailed the statement, either that haven't viewed it, or even if they have viewed it. So in the example that I was saying, if you wanna make sure we're avoiding sending duplicates, we can just keep it this way. It's include donors who email the statement, but they haven't viewed it yet. That way it's only gonna be printing and mailing those people that haven't already opened it up and downloaded it for themselves. All right, great. So um, you have a few other options down here, including um, setting, formatting your print statements for blank pages. So if you need to do double-sided printing, there's not one printed on the back of the other. You could also do a uh, forced uh, page break, things like that, adjust the formatting of the whole thing. And then whenever you're done, what you're going to end up doing is you're generating a statement um, that will, um, it will create a zip file for you that's going to have a um, file of PDFs that you can download and then print as needed from your own computer. So it's taking just a second to process here, but now that I refresh, you'll see that I have the option to download that zip file. And once I do, I'll be able to open that up and print those files as needed, mailing them out as well. All right, so um, the only thing I'll mention before we wrap up the statement section here is that if you are a Canadian customer, there are a few variations to how this process will look. Some um, different options will be, first of all, you'll have the option to include your treasurer's signature since that's required by the um, Canadian Tax Revenue Service. And then um, also you'll have things like your receipt number, and then you'll also have an option to issue replacement statements as well. All of those are Canadian specific uh, features that you can learn about within the uh, Canadian tax receipt um, documentation that we have within our help docs. So if you wanna look up more information about that, you can always look there as well. Okay, so that's what um, the statements process looks like, but what if throughout the rest of the year, you also wanna do some more reporting on the donations themselves? I'll show you some of the options that we have for um, reports within giving. So the first we're gonna be looking at is the most common, like the first page that you usually land on within giving is your dashboard. So your dashboard is a more graphic based reporting option that allows you to see, track trends and see some overall big picture numbers about how donations are going. So I'll show you, excuse me, some examples of what the dashboard can be filtered down to look like. First, you can choose which campus you wanna look, like, look at if you have multiple campuses. And then you can always set your date range. I'm gonna set this to be the last three months and we'll look at um, the last few weeks here. So, or the weeks within those last three months. 
So you'll be able to see trends and also have, have some breakdowns if you hover over these like this. You'll be able to move down to see um, some group of groups of common um, donor trends that you're interested in, including new donors, recurring donors, text donors. Then you'll be able to see in this next section a breakdown of payment methods and also payment sources. And then you'll be able to see at this bottom section too a breakdown of funds, the type of labels that you, you, you've used, and then the channels themselves. So you mentioned like there's batches and Stripe. Um, all of this can be kind of tweaked however you need to get the reports that you need. And then if you're ready to go and you need to share this either to print out for a staff meeting or maybe it's a, uh, like a members meeting you want to share with everyone, you can do that by exporting and you can either do it as a CSV or do a print view that is going to be printing out these graphs and everything for anybody that wants to see them. So yeah, that's what, uh, so the dashboard again is for the kind of big picture view of what you're seeing on your donation trends. If you want to dig a little deeper into your donations, you can move over to the next tab on this page. Um, and you can see all of your donor donations listed in a donation list like this. So I'm going to adjust to show you some of the options that you can use within this page. So let's say um, we want to look at donations that came in last year um, in 2022. So um, you'll see all of the, the donations from all campuses not filtered at all at first. If I wanted to filter down to something specific, like for example, I want to see all the donations that came in through the general fund. I can do that by choosing fund and general, and you'll see all of those donations filtered down to that. If I wanted to see, um, say for example, we want to see all the donations that came in through the Church Center mobile app. We can do that by moving down to the stamp filter option, and then I'm going to choose mobile app, and it'll show me all the donations from 2022 that came in through Church Center app. And say uh, one other thing that we want to look at is maybe we want to see all of the cash donations that came in as anonymous donors. So instead of me seeing a list of donors here, I want to see um, all the donations that came in anonymously. So again, we'll use stamp and then choose the anonymous stamp here. And you'll notice that the, any of those donations that were recorded as anonymous will show up as a list here. This is important because those, those donations are never going to show up on a donor report simply because there's no donor tied to it. But if you ever needed to see the total amount that was given anonymously throughout the year, you can do that using that option. And as most of donation lists throughout giving um, work, you can always export this both as a CSV or a PDF by clicking this export option up in the top right corner. All right, and then moving to the next tab over, we're going to look at the donor reports tab. So this page um, will allow you to see um, all of the, uh, many of the same filters that we were looking at the donation page. Um, you'll be able to filter by campus. You'll be able to set a date range. So we'll say, um, uh, instead of anonymous, because that's not really going to work for me, I'm going to start over here. So let's see. Um, we're going to work with 2022, and then we're going to filter this down to, um, let's say, donors to the, the, the general fund once more. So I want to see that and see actually the names of those donors. So you'll see here I get a full list of donors, and this is also the only place that you'll be able to see anywhere in Planning Center a cumulative total for how much was given within the date range that you'd set. So in this case, if I want to see how much um, Adam gave throughout 2022, which is the date range I had set, I can do that from the donor page simply by looking at the total here. These are also filterable, so if I wanted to look at, for example, like top donors, I can do that by filtering this list or sorting this list by amount. Um, here in that uh, far right column. All right, and then one other thing I wanted to highlight here as well is that if you wanted to see all the new donors that came in for a specific fund or a specific date range, you can always do that as well by checking this box. And in this case, you would be able to see anyone that gave for the first time in that, do in that date range. So we're looking at the date of their first donation. And because both of these donors gave for the first time in 2022, that's where they're going to show up as new donors within that selected date range. Great. So one other um, report that I wanted to highlight to you before we move on to something else is just the recurring donations page as well. So clicking recurring donations under donations and then in the la left column recurring donations, you'll be able to see this report that shows you a few different metrics on how um, recurring donations are going within your church. At the top, you have a monthly forecasting section, which will show you both what's remaining for the month, which in this case we don't have any, but you can see what's expected for next month based on the active and current donations that are set up within your account. Then on this bottom section, you're seeing a table of all of the, uh, all of the recurring donations based on the status we have filtered to. 
So initially we're looking at the active donation. So these are donations that were set up and are actively being processed. You also have the option to look at on hold donations. Um, and then also something I wanted to point out is just the fact that if there are some donations that were set up and then the donations or the donors um, payment method is deleted from their profile later on, then you can always see that from your recurring donations page here as well by filtering to this and showing uh, filtering to the missing payment method option. And it'll show you all the donations that were set up by those donors that are now missing a payment method. So yeah, it's just a cool tool to be able to keep, again, again a, uh, a feel on what's going on with recurring donations at your church. All right, great. So those are a lot of the reporting options within giving. Now I want to show you, um, dive a little bit deeper into Stripe and how you handle giving and bookkeeping. So um, to give you an idea of how Stripe and Planning Center giving work together is all the donations that are handled online are, are, are all the pro donations that are processed online are all handled by Stripe. So we have a few different inlets that come in through um, online donations, including the Church Center app, Church Center web, and it'll be all the card and ACH and Apple Pay donations, all of those text to give, all of that again is processed by Stripe. So what's happening is that when the donor gives, it's moved that money is moved over to Stripe, who groups that together, then they uh, process those donations and then move those over to your bank via a, what they call a Stripe payout or a deposit to your bank. So the timeline that it takes to actually process those depends on the type of payment method that's being used. Typically, it's just a few days for Stripe to process those and pay those out to your bank. But we'll use a card donation that we uh, processed with Brandon earlier on in the day as an example. So when he gives, um, that's going to be processed right away. So he'll either get an accept or decline message right away just saying like, hey, this went through or hey, this didn't go through. We need to try again. If those donations go through, then Stripe will take that donation. They're going to process it. It'll take three to four days for them to fully process it. They're going to batch that together with any donations that have been processed and cleared within the last number of days, whether it be two days or, or a week, however you set, set that up within your Stripe account. And then once all of those are cleared, they're going to put that in a deposit and then move it over to your church's bank. So that means that the, the life cycle of that donation can take a few days, but it's processed quickly and in a way that um, makes it so that you can then go back and review all of the donations that were included in those payouts before. So the way that you keep a pulse on how those donations or which donations were included in your payouts, you'll be using what we call a payout report. So this is an example that I'm going to show you um, of kind of an older one, um, but it'll show you some of the uh, options that you have within the Stripe payout report itself. So you'll notice that um, in the left column of the page, you'll see a list of all of the payouts that happen within the date range that you have set at the top of the page. So if you need to see a group of donations or a group of payouts altogether, you can do that by setting a custom date range or by choosing from the um, available options. Then on this page itself, you'll see a breakdown of the overall deposit that's made in the Stripe payout at the top. And then you'll see a breakdown of the gross income, the fees, and then the net income. So you'll be able to see what was actually deposited as well as what fees were paid for those donations. The way that Stripe works with fees is they actually take the fee from each transaction individually. So it makes it so that you don't have to do any, um, any work around those fees after the fact of receiving them or pay it out at any point. All that's handled by Stripe, and they and they um, take those those fees before actually depositing it to the bank. So it makes it a lot easier when you're working with um, the deposits themselves to know how many fees or what the amount of fees that were taken out are. If you want to see a breakdown of um, what funds or labels those donations were given to, you can look at that in the next section. You'll see the same, the gross, the fees, and the net for each of those um, funds that are break, broken down in those sections. And then at the bottom of the page, you'll notice that you will get a itemized list of donations. Um, all of those donations are those that were included in that specific deposit or payout. And so that way you'll be able to filter that down to either a date range or to a specific fund. All of the uh, similar um, uh, filtering options as you had on your donation list. And as always, you can always export that list as well if you need to. So yes, this is one of my favorite reports because it gives you just so much information when you're working with bookkeeping and planning center giving. All right, so one question you may be asking now, 
and it's a common question that we get from uh, from people working with uh, planning center is okay you've been talking about stripe what does it actually cost for me to process um, stripe donations so we've worked with stripe to actually as a partner to actually offer really low processing fees and really straightforward processing fees for donations that are processed through giving. So when you connect a Stripe account, you'll be able to um, take advantage of the pricing that I have shown here. So it's for all card transactions, no matter what the type of the card in the US, you have 2.15% plus 30 cents for all transactions. Um, for ACH, if you're doing a bank to bank transfer, those are gonna be a flat 30 cents, no matter, um, and there's no percentage as a part of that, 30 cents for ACH transactions as a straightforward pricing. In Canada, pricing works a little bit differently, but you'll be able to um, verify yourself as a nonprofit if you like to work with Stripe to do that. And you can get um, pricing as low as 2.2% plus 30 cents for card transactions. Um, ACH is not available in Canada at this point, but we're hoping that that option of the low processing fees for cards will be, uh, will be a great option for you and your donors. Okay, great. So before I wrap up, I just wanted to cover one last common question that we get about planning center giving. Um, we're interested in moving over to planning center giving. How does this work? Like, what does the transition look like? Do you have any, any tips for me as I'm moving, uh, moving over? So some things that I typically share with people who ask that question is just, first of all, making sure that your donors are aware of the change. Because overall, like, don't, I, I totally understand if we don't want donors to be involved in all the technical background of how a, a transition for, to another system works. However, making sure that they are aware of whatever steps that they need to take, whether it be setting up new payment methods or recurring donations, that's definitely something we suggest is making sure that donors are aware of the switch to another system. We also have a few options for moving over um, uh, donation history into giving from another system. You have the option, as always, to manually enter those donations into batches. But we also have some options of third-party platforms that have built um, integrations with Planning Center Giving using the Giving API. Um, so that way, if you either have a developer on staff, they can build their own integration, or if there's an integration already built by the platform that you're using, you can connect that and move those donations over. And overall, through the whole process, though we don't have um, like one-on-one -on -one migration help, our support is always available to answer whatever questions that you have about giving. So if you have questions about the transition process, about any of the things that we talked about today in our Planning Center University session, or if you're just wanting to know a little bit more about Planning Center giving in general, feel free to take advantage of that option to talk with our support team at any point by clicking the question mark up in the top right corner of the page at any point in time. All right, so again, if you do have questions, feel free to reach out to our support team. If you wanna look back on this session that we've talked about today, um, covering Planning Center Giving, you can always do that here on YouTube, or you can go to planningcenter.com slash university. So you can watch this training by yourself, you can share it with your staff or with other people, um, or just watch back and make sure that you, um, you totally understand the steps that you're taking when working with Planning Center Giving. I hope this was informative and we, we appreciate you joining us today. That's all I have for you. So thank you so much for joining us for Planning Center University today. Have a good one.